Good morning, everyone. In this video today, I want to focus on something which impacts three in every 10 of us at Pangborn and which the rest should know more about. But before I get on to that, Mr. Hewick is going to announce the results of the 100% charity run, which took place a couple of weeks ago. Good morning. Firstly, I'd like to echo all of the thanks to everyone who took part in and helped run or organise the charity 100% two weekends ago. We've all raised a significant amount of money for an excellent cause. As was stated prior to this, it was a divisional competition. And given this was a charity event, it mainly focused on the aspect of participation. We decided that the competition would be decided by a total percentage of house that took part. Those that were on DB that weekend were not included in the final scores, so do not count. Furthermore, due to this, we can include the boys and the girls in the same competition. Therefore, the results will include both. The placings are as follows. In sixth place was Illawarra. In fifth place, St George. Fourth, Arbinger. Third, Hesperus. In second place was Macquarie, which means Port Jackson win with over 80% of the house taking part. Well done to all that did take part. And if anyone would like to know their individual placings within the race, please do contact myself, Mr. Hawthorne or Miss Sanders. Have a great weekend. So well done again to all who took part and to Port Jackson for a great team effort. Now, I wonder what your worst school report has been. On the whole, I liked school and I look forward to my parents reading my report to me. They were handwritten and sent to them after the end of term. But in 1983, my report was not so good. I think I was going through a grumpy phase and my teachers noticed. After writing about his disappointment that I'd shown insufficient focus and gone off the boil and all that sort of thing, my headmaster finished his report with, I look forward to a more sustained eulogy next year. Neither my parents nor I understood what he meant. And even after looking up the word in a dictionary, we were still not very clear, other than that the report was my worst ever. At another time, a young man received this comment on his report. He will never amount to anything. I don't know if it was his worst report, but 10 years later, Albert Einstein wrote three academic papers which changed the world. Another young man had, had this said about him. Hopeless, rather a clown in class, he's just wasting other people's time, certainly on the road to failure. John Lennon and the Beatles have been described as the greatest and most influential act of the rock era, all of which goes to show that you shouldn't let your school report define your future. Both men are in good company. All of these people also found school difficult, but went on to be highly successful. What they all have in common is that they're dyslexic, like many of you. 83 of the pupils here have been diagnosed with dyslexia and another 58 have dyslexic traits. This week has been designated Dyslexia Awareness Week 2020, and the aim is to show that whilst there are obstacles and challenges to be overcome, dyslexics have incredible strengths too. Two years ago, this short film was produced to raise awareness of dyslexia. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to have a chat to you about dyslexia. Anyone be interested in having a dyslexic baby? What the hell kind of a question is that? World's first dyslexic sperm bank. Open today. Tell me, what do you know about dyslexia? In that disability. A lot of people think that people with dyslexia are stupid. Only 3% of people see dyslexia as anything other than a disadvantage. But look at the people around this room. Steve Jobs, Albert Einstein. We've got a whole catalogue 
here full of people who uh, are or were dyslexic, like Thomas Edison, Henry Ford. Dyslexics have a difference in their brains that makes them literally see the world a bit differently. Did you know that 40% of self-made millionaires are dyslexic? Say that again. What? That's amazing. It hasn't held any of them back. Dyslexia should be viewed as a different way of thinking. And today, a new charity, Made by Dyslexia, the charity which is backed by Sir Richard Branson. Not... To establish sperm banks that would accept donations only from people with dyslexia. If you were thinking about how most people see dyslexia, what, what words do you think people would use to describe them? Uh, at a disadvantage, mm -hmm. but by the sounds of it, they're not. Now, one of the joys about working at a place like Pangborn is seeing the growth in confidence and the flourishing of many pupils who we know have struggled with many aspects of school life. Many of you will remember Sam Holloway, who left two years ago. He was chief of Hesperus and loved drama, particularly parts with a comedy element to them. He's kindly sent this message to you to mark Dyslexia Awareness Week. My name is Sam Holloway. I studied at Pangbourne for seven years and left in 2019. I've just started a mechanical engineering degree after a gap year where I set up a business with one of my friends. I have dyslexia. From a very young age, I struggled to spell and read, but I always promised myself I wouldn't let it hold me back. So how did I get seven A's and two B's in my GCSEs three A-levels and a, into university. And the truth is, hard work. At the start of my journey at Pangborn, my ability to read and write was described as poor. I would struggle to write a book report, and when I did, every other word would be spelt wrong. My reading age was three years from where it should have been, but to me, it didn't matter, because I was dyslexic, and that was my excuse. When I came to Pangborn, I realized that just because I was dyslexic didn't mean that I wouldn't need GCSEs. I was going to be compared to people who found reading and writing easy. That's when I knew I had to embrace my dyslexia and find ways to overcome it. I attacked it in three ways. The first was going head on and trying to improve my reading and writing, spending hours and hours down in learning support. Another was finding ways to cope, and I still use these today. One of those is surrounding yourself with friends who are prepared to help you in situations where dyslexia might be an obstacle. Finally, and the thing I found the hardest, was accepting within myself that if I wanted to compete in the big leagues, then I was, would have to outwork those around me to compensate. You can't not be dyslexic, and sometimes it's really hard at 2am when you're still writing an essay that everyone else wrote in 30 minutes. The thing I think that got me where I am is I wasn't afraid to fail. I didn't listen to people who said I couldn't do it because it would be too hard for me but it's not all bad. It helped me see the world in a different light and has taught me many lessons and I'm sure I have many more to learn. As Sir Winston Churchill put it, success is not final, failure is not fault. It's the will to continue that counts. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. I hope that's been interesting. Let's all try to recognize each other's strengths and to work hard at overcoming our challenges. I invite you to join me in a short prayer. Almighty God, thank you for this opportunity to be made more aware of the strengths which dyslexia can bring. As we're tempted to compare ourselves with others, help us to remember that each of us is unique and deserving of respect. Help us to be supportive of those facing challenges and humble enough to recognize and celebrate one another's strengths. Thank you for the week we've just had. And we pray that you protect and help us in the week ahead, especially those on their DOV gold, silver and bronze expeditions. Amen. Thank you all. Have a good week and make sure you keep up the good habits.